Hey guys, I'm Francois from Production Music Live and today it's Sunday. I um, just went to the studio and yesterday I was listening to a talk by producer Christian Hürth, Swiss producer. Um, he is producing artists like EDX and Nora and Pure. Very distinct sound. He's also running the label Enormous Tunes and he was talking about his process a little bit and especially how he does his chord plugs and stuff. So I'm sitting down today quickly taking some notes in Ableton uh, of what has been said yesterday. It's not going to be rocket science, but it's still, I think, a nice recipe and ingredients, collection of ingredients to sort of put this sound together on a basic level. So um, I have a kick here. I'm going to uh, dissect it for you quickly and a uh, simple kick, um, a little bit of EQing the boxiness here. And then we are already getting to the main element, which is the sort of the chord pluck. And this is always layered. That's very important. That's different sounds played together. So if I play the solo. So what we have here is basically we're in A minor and this is a little progression I just typed into Ableton here. And last chord is the same as the first chord. Um, not too crazy. The interesting thing is how this is put together. So you always have a noise component. In this case, I just used the noise from the Arturia Mini. And then it's a little bit depends on how much decay time do we want on the sound, how much sustain do we want on the sound. Uh, might get even a bit more decay here. If we put the um, decay on, uh, we can also adjust the sustain level here. Sorry, here, decay level here, decay time here. And it's getting a little of, bit of this release tail part. So you have this layer on top and then you have usually a sign thing or it could be a sign thing, but it's like the belly of the sound. And in this case, I just used a sine wave here from Serum, nothing else. Just a simple sine wave and put the release time up a bit to 300 seconds. 300 milliseconds. So you combine those two sounds. They're grouped here in an instrument rack. Okay, and for the moment, the noise is too loud, but I also have this pad component, which could be used, but doesn't have to be used. I call it pad here. But basically what Christian is doing, he's switching those sounds. He has those four ingredients for his plug sounds, something that makes noise, something that kind of supports the... Um, belly of the sound, so like a sine wave or something like that. Then he's putting a transient on top, for example, here from um, from Serum as well. Hold on, this one. And I use this glass lid here, this noise. This would be the transient. He's even using a transient shaper on top of that. And then uh, the last element could be a pad-like uh, element, or in this case, I have a plug here. But here we are using uh, more five voices, and here we are using four voices. So this thing is detuned. And if we take longer uh, decay and release times, it's getting more paddy. And now you put all these four together. And you have something like this. He also said he's not really using lots of reverbs. He's trying to use as little reverb as possible. So on this one sound, we already have reverb. And then you could throw a reverb on the whole 
sorry, then you could throw a reverb on the whole thing, uh, maybe through a return channel. Um, reverb, let's copy this over to the second one here. And let's say this one is actually short. So 0.4 seconds, something like this. And this, let's say there's a longer reverb here, maybe two seconds or something. Let's send it in there. So it's on the block, but maybe a little less. Let's play it together with the kick. So this is our basic feel. Um, this is basically how he's layering the plugs. And then he, whenever he's making a new song or a new remix, he basically just like, okay, let's use a different sound here and maybe also exchange this or bring this one up by an octave. Totally changes the feel of the plug sound. Um, but you're not really doing that much. You're just flipping those elements. For example, if I bring the sine wave up here. And let's say I'm putting in the unison and more voices here. Even bringing the level up a bit. Hmm. Already something different, right? So we, we didn't do that much, but uh, this way uh, it's kind of interesting uh, to work like that. Um, it's layering, of course, all, it's not a new technique or anything, but I kind of like the surgical approach to it. And this also leads us to the bass section where there's a clear approach. Um, pretty much always, he's pretty much always using the same soft bass. It's that logic um, instrument, I just forgot the name, but you can basically use any uh, sub bass generating device. And in this case, I'm using Serum here and I have this sub bass with a uh, sine wave. And on top, I have a, um, a square wave, an octave higher. This one is an octave lower. So you see those two elements here occupying the frequency space. And then we are starting to cut it off around 120 hertz. So this is kind of our mono bass in the background or in the low frequencies. And then we have a character giving bass element um, like this one here. We are just playing the same notes as in the chord progression in the pluck. And we're making sure we are cutting this off here because everything else down here is being occupied by our sub bass. So we are kind of handing over to this character mid frequency bass here. And I used an ARP sound to sort of put this in here. It's nothing special at the moment. It's also pretty short. The envelopes are really short because that's kind of the vibe uh, of this example here. And then what he's doing to sort of widen the overall perception of the character base, he's adding in something called wide base. So an element that helps, um, oops, sorry an element that helps make this element feel wider in the frequency range. And it's kind of should not be perceived as a separate element. So kind of occupy the same frequency range more or less. And then you have more voices here and detune it. So these are my more one-voiced elements in the bass frequencies, the sub bass and the character bass. And now notice the difference when we are adding in the wide bass. Okay, so it's getting wider in the stereo spectrum and sounds fuller 
but it's not really starting to, uh, you know, uh, clog up too much information there. So combining that with our plug sound. If you do something like this, you always have to decide like which element do I want to focus on? Do I want to focus on this mid character bass element more than on the plug or do I want them to be equally loud or uh, do I want the plug to be louder? Since this plug is quite prominent here, you could also think about leaving the character about, uh, bass out. So. For example, if you want to make room for another element in this area here. So, or you could also take it down. Okay, so basically this is the approach. It obviously uh, needs a little bit of tweaking and stuff. And you could also make something more future house-ish here with FM uh, synthesis or whatnot, you could also uh, sort of um, uh, take the signal from oscillator A and uh, sort of modulate oscillator B with it or something like that. I mean, if we do this. I didn't like that too much. So I'm not going to do it here, but you, you get the point. Um, and then what about the uh, groove elements? Let's quickly take a look at the clap or snare position. Uh, typical for lots of EDM tracks, you will put in this kind of pre-clap, which is a very short clap sample I have here. And you see it's still in the second position, but I use the track delay function to kind of play it 20 milliseconds early already. So this thing is getting, getting uh, giving you this transient for the clap. You just play the kick and this thing. So it, it feels a bit early. And then you have this other element, which is going to be your main clap and focusing on the high frequencies of the clap. more snare in this case but we are occupying the high frequencies with this one like these drum samples are out of our drum sample pack d premium volume 2 you can check the link below in the description i like we've made it a couple of years ago but i still use it every day um, for anything i'm working on and we have a snare a belly component here where we have so this lower part of the snare so this is for the mid frequencies this is for the higher frequencies and then this one is for the transient for the pre-clap and if we put them all together I uh, actually need to Actually, we would have to give them a little bit of room as well. Maybe some drums room could be, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if this is not even a little too short for that, but let's, for the sake of this video, put it into these claps. And then a closed hi-hat in the offbeat position quickly. So. And it was also interesting, um, Christian said he finds EQing a piano especially difficult because pianos sometimes have those uh, two strings or even more strings and they have those uh, harmonics and uh, resonant frequencies um, shimmering along and this kind of difficult to handle. Um, I'm just putting in the free Keyzone classic uh, 
piano VST right here and just copying the chord plug from the uh, chord progression and turning those notes into long chord notes. And we're putting this one a bit into the background here. Okay, so these are basically the ingredients um, uh, layering in the base area, layering in the chord plug area with actually like four ingredients, um, putting together your snares and claps out of three ingredients. So it's it's like a good football alignment, three, four, three. Um, and on top of that, he'll use the rhythm grid of the chord plug to come up with a melody. And there you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, so we are putting this in and then we are usually just deleting all the stuff. And then we could probably say, well, if that was our highest note in the plug, let's go a little higher. So we're in A minor, so all the white keys are allowed, basically. Play together with everything. Let's actually turn off the uh, the reverb on that thing. Um. And let's go down here. And then so like could also use a different sound or flute or something or maybe also play this like an octave higher and it also depends a little bit on if you have a vocal or not but uh, let's keep it like this these are just some notes about the basic style and how, what to how to think about it and what to keep in mind and how to not do too much it's just like me taking notes here and recording the screen so you guys can also watch it again. So I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to leave a comment and a like, subscribe to this channel, and I hope to see you next time.